Loch Fyne. Located in the east end of Glasgow, opposite the famous Barra's Market, is Scotland's oldest shellfish bar. I can tell you it was the third week in November 1960 and we were absolute rookies. The shop was opened by Albert Millard in 1960 and was named after his favourite camping area in Scotland. Loch Fine is now owned and run by Albert's son, Alan. We do have garlic and mussels, we do have seafood cocktails, but Wilkes and mussels still make up over 80% of the trade. Still Wilkes and mussels. That's what people know. It's a very personalised thing, shellfish. There's 50% of the population enjoy shellfish, I've been told, and 50% don't. So I've been told. The mussels from Loch Fine are rope grown and sourced from various locations in Scotland including the Shetland Isles. Up until people started going abroad, shellfish was, well, we were English as well as Scottish, but particularly Scottish peculiarity, especially Winkles. See, it's not Wilkes we sell, it's Winkles. We sell them as Wilkes, because that's what people know them as. At Loch Fine, Wilkes are usually served with salt and vinegar and eaten with a small pin to extract the meat. I would say that people are much more particular. The idea of napkins at one point would laugh. That was a joke. They like getting their hands full of muscle bread. Not only do they have napkins now, they want to have a separate bowl to put the muscles in. I, I'm not terribly sure if I'm allowed to say that shellfish is good for you. For a matter of interest, it's a known fact that shellfish is an aphrodisiac, especially oysters, and there's a good reason for it. The reason being that oysters contain all the natural vitamins and minerals essential to the well-being of mankind, and it helps our sex life. Alan has been described as a true eccentric by his regular customers and fellow traders at the Barra's Market. To let you understand it, this is not a professional artist. This is a chap that did all that work in the shop. 90% was his idea. He wanted to look like an old ship. Years later, he said, do you know fancy I do some, a painting for you? A mock-up of you as a sailor from the 1800s. That was the result. And he says, I said, that looks like me a wee bit. He said, that's the whole idea. Oh, and there's an interesting story. Uh, I was on a holiday in um, Florida, uh, Universal Studios. I got a tap on the shoulder, and this chap says, any chance I've played a muscles? I says, pardon? I says, my God. <laughs> Loch Fine has a broad customer base, including locals, tourists, and expats returning to visit Glasgow. I would reckon 80% are regulars. I have a customer still coming in. St. Mick Open, he still comes in. And his children, and his grandchildren, and his great-grandchildren. That's what I rely on. If I didn't have all those regular customers, I wouldn't be here. So I've been coming here for about 30 years. Say about 40 years. Just over 50 years. Uh, we've been coming Three here years? since... No. Nice. Well, the wee man's eight now. I've been taking him since he was... Probably I've been coming here since I was a kid. I used to come with my father every Sunday. Yeah, probably about 30 years ago when I was a, a wee boy. My grandparents think we've been here at the weekend with the bars. She used to be the best customer during the winter. Hail, rain or snow, I was still in here on a Thursday or a Friday. Loch Fine is an institution in Glasgow and attracts customers from all over Scotland who visit the area just to eat at Allen's Shellfish Bar. And I'm talking about travelling, hmm, maybe Midlothian, Edinburgh, Ayr, Falkworth. I've got customers, uh, I forget the chap's name, from Canada. Once a year he came to Glasgow to visit his friends. I must go and visit the Loch Fine. He always did that. The lady from America, she still comes in at least once a year, maybe twice a year. And she's like, ah. Oh. I says, Miriam, what is that? What song? She says, no, I'm back in the Loch Fine. And the chap's from South Africa and an Australian chap. I'm originally from the Carlton. And I now live in Australia. So every time I'm over, I pop into the muscle shop. All regulars. Once every five years, they're still regulars. Customers return to Loch Fine because it has maintained its original menu and added a few new recipes. Well, in my opinion, any business that's still in business after 50 years has got to be doing something right. I like seafood, and this is it. You see all the stuff people don't come back, do they? I got four packets of dolls. It's for my son up in Shetland. A friend of his came down from Shetland, came in here, purchased it, 
and my son just loves it so he's asked me to send it up to Shetland. The Shetland's got all the mussels and salmon and fish but they don't have any dolls. <laughs> it's just excellent, it's excellent value and it's good service um, but certainly for value I think it's probably unbeatable. Compared to other places we usually go um, somewhere in town it's like a kilo pot for like, 13 pounds. So if you, if you weigh that up against £3.50 for a large plate it's like it's no comparison. Plate of garlic mussels. I think I think I reduced it to three fifty. There's a limit to what people pay. Still the barrels. It's that was up the town. Five ninety five, six ninety five. That's what you expect to pay. Not here. The Barrows is a major street and indoor market dating back to the early part of the twentieth century, where traders sold their wares from handcarts. The market became more formalised in the nineteen twenties and thirties with the building of the MacIver Sheds and the world renowned Barlands Ballroom. It used to get to a stage that every table was full, there was a, a sitting room in there, was full, with seven of our staff, with a queue at the door, could not cope, literally could not cope, all because of the barrers. And I made a remark to a customer in a joke about coming to the barrers, she's not come to the law, fine, then I go to the barrers. Customers have noticed changes in the market over the past few decades. I think there has been a general decline in the barras, um, and uh, you know it used to be really busy, popular, and uh, it was very much part of Glasgow culture, the barras. But um, it doesn't seem to have the same ring to it now. Well, if I may say so, they could have moved with the times. What I said to myself was, there's no way that we can let the the standard down, the lower the standard. I've spent a lot of money, but I think it's been worth it. What I must remember is, whether I like it or not, these customers from 50 years ago, by the very nature of things, they're, they're dying off. And uh, I've got to rely on new customers, are quite a lot. And I perhaps have taken it a little bit for granted. People do have to be reminded. And in my wisdom, I have decided it's absolutely necessary to get the shop done up and get leaflets drops and perhaps paper advertising. Over the years, I've done promotions. Uh, I get dressed up as a pirate and I call myself the pirate of the Barabian instead of the Caribbean. Girls dressed up as mermaids in a town distributing leaflets. Not a, they choose mermaids! Not a chance to help. Seriously. Uh, mermaids are supposed to be pretty. In fact, it was a customer that drew to my attention. He says, do you know, not only you, the oldest shellfish bar, you're one of the oldest shops in the bars. He says, you and Pearson are the only two that sort of open 50 years. People come in to take photographs. At one time, there was a shop called Oyster Bar. 1890s opened. And they closed down about 10, 15 years ago now. And there was also a, a, a fishmonger in Bain Square who was amazing. Away. So we asked several market traders for an interview. Sadly, they all refused to take part in this documentary. You must remember, they were talking about the barras, not just the barras we need to help, the East End, regeneration of the East End. There are plans for investment and regeneration of the barras market and surrounding areas. We would never have smelled a grass if I hadn't been to the Commonwealth Games, and they're trying to coordinate and improve the area, and it will help. Loch Fyne is in steady hands with Captain Allen at the helm. It's full steam ahead with his plans to make sure his ship stays on course for future generations of seafood lovers. Lost patience from dry land and a slow hour this fit is this life guided by my